Right, so we're going to do a quick walkthrough of how to replace a diverter cartridge on Ideal Logic. First step, isolate the float and return on the valves underneath the boiler. Then drain the boiler by the filling loop on the return valve. Whilst draining, isolate the cold valve on the boiler and open a hot tap anywhere in the property to drain the hot water. At this point, connect up your foot pump to the expansion vessel and pump up to 20 PSI to ensure there's no leftover water inside the expansion vessel. Once happy it's all drained down, you need to disconnect the nut on the top of the left hand block, the screw holding the plate exchanger in, the flow pipe and your hot pipes underneath and then the, also the screw. Once they're all disconnected, the, left hand, the entire left hand block should just pull all the way out. Once it's out, we need to undo the plug at the back and also the main body of the cartridge at the front using an adjustable spanner. With the body out of place, you can see there's a lot of O-rings here, so we need to make sure we use the silicone grease on all the O-rings, um, including the two O-rings that connect up to the plate heat exchanger. So the cartridge comes in two parts. So first of all, we put the front face in, bit the cartridge in first, screw that in, and then we've got a little spindle that need to connect together, as you can see. If you look down the hole, you can see that they're connected together there. Once that's in, put our spring in place and then the back plug goes on. Um, and we will just tighten that up with a adjustable spanner. And then once that's tight, we'll go back to the front of the cartridge and make sure that's tight as well. Before we do anything else, we will get some tissue roll and dry out the entirety of the inside of the boiler as you may have spilled some water. Then slot the left hand block back into the boiler, ensuring the plate heat exchanger and the block line up. Using a formula allen key, tighten up the screw, holding the plate to the left hand block. Then ensuring the rubber washer is in place, tighten up the top connection by hand and then nip up with a pair of grips. Always changing my fibre washers on the connections, tighten up by hand first, then nip up with a spanner. Lastly, tighten up the posi screw underneath the boiler, holding the left hand block in place. Once happy it's all tight, turn your tap off and open your cold inlet valve underneath the boiler. Checking for leaks, first of all, underneath the boiler and then inside the boiler. If there is any leaks, you'll know straight away whether it's on the cold water side. Once happy that it's not on, not leaking, we will turn on our flow and return on the valves underneath and start to fill the pressure up. As the pressure's been filled up, we'll be checking the valves underneath the boiler and inside the boiler for any dripping or puddling of water. Once happy there's no leaks, we will turn our power back onto the boiler and run a hot tap ensuring the boiler fires up under domestic hot water. Once it's fired up, what we'll do is hold on to our flow pipe and make sure that no heat is going down the flow pipe and the 100% of the heat is going down the hot water pipe. You can take extra steps here and use thermometers on the flow and return to check the temperature differential between the two.